Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to make a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, if you have not done so already, please pull up the communication card that is in front of you. Put your name on it. Put it beside you so it'll be picked up after church. That way we know, we know you have worshiped with us this morning and we can count you in our statistics for worship and for our church. Just to let you know, Blood Drive is happening next Sunday from 11 o'clock until 2 o'clock in the gym. That's next Sunday, Blood Drive. If you've not signed up, please call the church office and get that arranged. Uh, also, we need volunteers are needed for Sunday school teaching this coming fall. If you'd like to teach or would, would love to teach or want, want more information on that, please see Nikki Verbleck and uh, her phone number is in the news and notes and just get in touch with her or even the church office and get in touch with her because we love to have new Sunday school teachers as well. Also, volunteers will need to take care of the foyer between the office and the sanctuary. The plants need to be, be, they need to be watered and taken care of. So if you'd like to do that, please let us know also. And we also need volunteers to take care of items in the pews, such as communication cards, the pencils, the, the pencils, the envelopes, and all that. So if you like that, please let the church office know as well, and we'll get you arranged with helping out that way. Also, just to let you know, currently the church library, I don't know if you even knew we had a library. The church library is going through a cleanup process. If you donated any books or anything like that for the church library and you want them back, please, please uh, contact the church. Um, also, there is a bookshelf in the Breezeway, and on that bookshelf there are a whole bunch of things. If there's anything like that you'd like to see or use, please, please uh, take advantage of that because it's on the, uh, breeze, in the breezeway there. Take what you want. Prayer vigil is scheduled for Tuesday, July the 9th here at Trinity from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Please come and pray. Pray for your church. Pray for your country. Pray for your family and pray for your community. And that's the time for you to come and just speak with your God in prayer between you and Him and just pray for everything. Also, let you know, a, a special preschool fall enrollment day is set for Friday, July 26th, from 10 o'clock to 2, 12 o'clock noon. Um, if you don't have a child and you know somebody who does, give information to them that they may look into that as well. Also, the last thing I have on my list here is a catered meal is scheduled for July 21st from J Ben's Chuck Wagon. Tickets are only $5 and they're available from Joanne Dixon and you may buy those anytime from today until when, Joanne? Where are you at, Joanne? She was. She is here. She's in the back. I'm sorry. Just buy your tickets, okay? <laughs> with that being said, let's begin with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. Almighty and eternal God, you have blessed us with a free land, having rights and privileges others dream about. We live in a land where liberty is given to us. With freedom also comes temptation to misuse our freedom. Forgive us, Lord, for misusing freedom in selfish ways. Keep us from squandering the precious opportunities you have given to us by the many freedoms we have. For these sins and all sins, sins of thought, word, and deed, by what we have done or failed to do, we stand before you now asking your forgiveness and for the help of the Holy Spirit to amend our sinful lives. Hear the good news. God has heard your confession. He has forgiven your sins because of the cross of Christ. Receive that forgiveness in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. Help us by the aid of your Holy Spirit to relish the freedoms you have given to us as Christians and as a country. 
Let us rise. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you have given our country a precious gift, the gift of freedom. As we celebrate that gift from you today, help us by your Holy Spirit to remember the greater gift of freedom in the cross and empty tomb of Jesus, who gives us freedom now and eternity with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, one Lord, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today is from Exodus chapter 12, verses 10 through 28. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, 
and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be, be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations as a statute forever. You shall keep it as a feast. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven out of your houses, for if anyone eats what is leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a holy assembly, and on the seventh day a holy assembly. No work shall be done on those days. But what everyone needs to eat, that alone may it be prepared by you. And you shall observe, observe the feast of unleavened bread. For on this very day I brought you her, your host out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a statute forever. In the first month from the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. For seven days no leaven is to be found in your houses. If anyone eats what is leavened, that person will be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is a sojourner or a native of the land. You shall eat nothing leavened, and all your dwellings, dwelling places you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go and select lambs for yourselves according to your clans, and kill the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and touch the lintel and the two doorstops with the blood that is in the basin. None of you shall go out of the door of this house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to enter your houses to strike you. You shall observe this rite as a statute for you and for your sons forever. And when you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And, we're chi and when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel in Egypt. When he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed their heads and worshipped. Then the people of Israel went and did so. As the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ Jesus, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, I'd like to invite all the children up for a special message for them. Good morning, guys. How is everyone doing this morning? Good? Uh, do you know what today is? What is today? Today's date is, we're still in the month of June, and it's the last day of June, so it's June the 30th, right? Which means the 1st of July is tomorrow, the 2nd of July is Tuesday, the 3rd of July is Wednesday, and on Thursday would be... The fourth, what do we do on 4th of July? Fire, why do we do fireworks? Why do we show off fireworks on 4th of July? Because it is a holiday, right? A national holiday. It's called Independence Day, right? Which we oftentimes refer to as the 4th of July. In other words, we're celebrating the time when the Declaration of Independence was signed, right? Back in 1776, 148 years ago, right? How many of you were alive back then? I wasn't alive back then. And you know what? No one in the sanctuary was alive back then. 148 years ago. So we're going to celebrate our country's birthday is basically what we're going to do, right? The anniversary of our country. And you're going to do that by picnic, maybe, maybe fireworks, or maybe you do nothing at home and just watch TV or just go out and play, right? 
But on the 4th of July, we're going to talk about Independence Day. That's what we're talking about today. And what am I holding in my hand? American flag, right? How many times do you see this? How many times do you see the American flag? On the 4th of July, you're going to see it all over the place, right? When you come to the sanctuary, we have one flag, and there's actually flags in the, in the narthex, but there's a flag on the left-hand side of the sanctuary, okay? And it's, it's down, so you can't really see it. But this you can see, right? Do you know what the flag stands for? Anybody know what the flag stands for? 50 states of the 50 stars, right? There are 13 stripes, red and white. What do they stand for? 13 first colonies, right? The first 13 states, you might say. Right? And so we celebrate with waving flags, right? So what does this have to do with church? That's a good question. What does this have to do with church? Because it does in the respect that where do you live? You live in Canada? Do you live in Canada? No, you don't live in Canada. You live in Germany? No, you don't live in Germany. Do you live in Nicaragua? No, you don't live in Nicaragua. Do you live in Peru? No. You live where? Where do you live? What country do you live in? You live in the United States. That's where God has placed you, right? And we always have to remember that there are authorities over us. You know, there are people over us, watching over us, protecting us, and we also need to serve those over us, right? Who are those over you? Your mom and your dad, right? Mom and your dad. There are police, right? And firemen and first responders, right? And then there are your teachers. There's your principals at your schools, right? Your vice principals at your school. And then... When you get older, you're going to be doing this thing called paying taxes, right? And you pay taxes to the United States federal government, right? And so you are actually over their authority, all those government officials. But you know what? We forget that even those officials, government officials, are still under somebody. Who is that? God. That's right. God is above everybody. You know, if it wasn't for God, there would, be, there would be no United States. So we can always talk, we can talk about the United States and our country all day long. But you know what's more important than our country? And that is the one who created us, the one who created our country, the one who gives us freedoms that we have that a lot of people don't have in the world, that we do. And we got to th- give thanks to God for all the things he blesses us with. Because you know what else he blesses us with? In all of our freedoms that we have, we, we do a lot of things that we shouldn't do. We make a lot of bad choices sometimes. But you know what God does for us still? God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die upon the cross and give us forgiveness of our sins and gives us everlasting life. That one day we will be in heaven with him. One day we actually won't be part of the United States. You realize that? We won't be part of this country. Instead we'll be in heaven, which a much glorier, a much better, a much much, much better place for us to be because we'll be with God and we'll be with his son Jesus who has taken away all of our sins and we'll always serve him and always glorify him for what he's done for us. Hey, let's all fold our hands. I want you to pray with me, okay? Dear God, we thank you for everything you give to us. We thank you for our freedom. We thank you for your life that you give to us in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. And then if you'd like to take one item out of this treasure box, you may do.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Why do we do what we do? I have a riddle for you this morning. A man, every morning, wakes up. He gets ready for work, gets dressed, walks out his apartment, and goes to the elevator. He reaches his hand up and pushes the first floor where the elevator drops from the 12th floor to the first floor. He gets off the elevator and he walks three blocks to work where he works all day long. At the end of the day, he walks the three blocks back to his apartment building. He gets on the elevator and he pushes the 10th floor button. He gets off the elevator and walks up two flights of stairs to his apartment. He does this every day. Why? Why especially does he walk up two flights of stairs every day? Do you know the reason why? Reason? Let me tell you. The reason is because he is too short to push the 12th floor button on the elevator. So he has to push the 10th floor elevator button and get off and walk up the two extra flights of stairs. Why do we do what we do? Old Testament reason. God tells the people of Israel, as they wander in the wilderness, that for a week they are to get rid of all the yeast, all the leaven out of their homes. They are not to eat anything with yeast, nothing with leaven. Everything should be unleavened. That means no donuts, no rising bread, everything basically like crackers. No yeast for an entire week. And the reason for this, why are they to do what they're supposed to do? Is because the Lord their God has rescued them from the land of Egypt. It is also they are to perform the act of a sacrificial lamb. They are to kill the sacrificial lamb according to their family and take the blood of that lamb and put it upon the doorposts and the frame of their doors of their house. They are to do this as a remembrance of what God had done for them in the land of Egypt. Because when the angel of death went over the homes of all the Egyptians and all the homes in the land of Egypt, those who had blood on it, the blood of the lamb, those are the ones whom were spared. They lived. And then we get to verse 28 in our text this morning, which says this. The people of Israel went and did as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Why do the people of Israel do what they did? Is it because they asked the question, why not? Why do they do what they did? Because they just wanted to? No. Why do the people of Israel perform the acts that God instructs them to do? Because this is a memorial. This is a remembrance of the deliverance that God had given to them and their ancestors in the land of Egypt. It is the time when they were desperate, when they needed salvation and salvation come to them from their God, who instructed them to kill the sacrificial lamb and put the blood upon the door, posts and the frame of their houses. Why did they do what they did? Because God commanded them reminded them of his salvation. So why do you do what you do? Why do you go to work every morning, or most mornings, I should say, or why do you get up and get ready for work? If you're retired, you may go mow the lawn, or go to the coffee shop, or go to the beauty parlor, or whatever you may do. Why do you do what you do? Because we can do it, because we ask the question, why not? Or maybe possibly because God has given us the freedom 
to do so. Those patriots who served way back 140 some odd years ago, who fought for their freedom in the Revolutionary War, why did they do what they did? Because they wanted their freedom. And then those men and women who fought in World War I in the early 1900s, and even those who fought 30 years later in the World War II, why did they do what they did? They were preserving, they were fighting for their freedom. And then those men who fought in the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Desert Storm, Iraq, and any kind of conflict that we've come into contact with since then, why did they do what they did? Because they were fighting for people's freedom. So why do we do what we do, especially in the free country we live in? It's so funny that the freedoms that we've been given by our God and been given by those who have gone before us, oftentimes we take for granted. Oftentimes we do the wrong things because we have those freedoms to begin with. It's almost as if we have been blessed with freedom and also we've been cursed with freedom as well. But the one freedom we forget about is the greatest freedom of all. And it is the spiritual freedom that God gives to us in His Son, Jesus. It is there upon that cross that God sees the blood shed by His Son, the Passover Lamb, for the sins of the entire world, that the angel of death may pass over us when He sees that blood and give to us everlasting life. He grants us our forgiveness. He grants to us the rights to be called His sons and daughters. Freedom has been gained. Not just a physical freedom, but a spiritual freedom by our God who gives His Son in a sacrifice for you and for me. And that blood of the Passover lamb upon that cross reminds us always to live our lives and do what we do because God has called us by His Spirit. Why do you do what you do? Not because we're trying to make our way to get to heaven, because that's impossible. Why do we do what we do? Because we can? No, we do what we do because God has created us this way and has given us His Spirit, and that's who we are. The man who gets on the elevator on the first floor to go to the 12th floor, he can only push the 10th button because that's who he is. In the same way, we do what we do in serving each other and serving our God because that's who we are. Elizabeth Keekley was a slave before the Civil War in the state of Missouri. She actually struck up a deal with her master, with her slave owner. If she would pay him $1,200 it would pay for her freedom and her son's freedom. Now, Elizabeth was a seamstress, a very well-known seamstress. And she had a plan to go to New York City and get the money quickly by doing her services with the people there. Of course, back in those days, when you were a slave, you could not travel. Your owner had rights to you. So instead, her clients in St. Louis, Missouri helped her out with those $1,200 and paid her $1,200 for her with her services intact. And she and her son were given freedom. And they moved to Washington, D.C., where even herself, Mary Lincoln, was one of the ones whom she sewed dresses for. Notice that Elizabeth Keekley was given her freedom. She didn't completely earn it. It was given to her. In the same way, your freedom and my freedom, both physical and especially our spiritual freedom, has been given to us. Let's not take that freedom for granted. Let's always understand why we do what we do. Putting aside our old selfish self and putting on the fact that we have been baptized into Christ, that we are His. Shall we keep on sinning so that grace may abound? Paul responds by saying, absolutely not, because that's not who we are. 
We have been baptized into Christ in his death and resurrection. And why do we do what we do? Because we are God's children. And God's children reflects his image. As God looks upon us, he does not see our sin, but he sees the blood of the Lamb shed on Calvary's cross for you and for me. And in that blood, you and I live as his children. We do what we do because we are his. In Jesus' name. Let us rise for prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, your death on the cross has set us free from our worst enemies, sin, death, and the devil. In holy baptism, you made us your own and gave us not only the forgiveness of sins, but also your Holy Spirit. Help us live in that freedom. Lord, in your mercy, Hear Almighty God, you have given us a great gift in the freedom we have as a country and as individuals. Grant that we always use our freedom to advance your kingdom and never to bring harm to anyone. Lord, in your mercy, Hear Father in heaven, as we celebrate our independence on this week, grant that we might find joy in the parades and barbecues and gatherings and fireworks. As we enjoy these things, grant that we have a bigger picture of freedom in mind, freedom in Christ and your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, while we celebrate our national freedom, there are those who are not free because of their faith in you. They are imprisoned, beaten, tortured, and some will die for your name. Give them strength by your Holy Spirit to remain faithful unto death and receive the crown of life which you give to them. Lord, in your mercy, we ask for you to bless with your compassion and love those who are suffering and struggling from cancer. Help them in their battles of treatment and keep them in your care. We pray especially for those suffering from lymphoma, Brenda and James, those with lung cancer, John, Stephanie, and Kathleen. Those struggling with brain cancer. John, Robert, Dylan, and Lindley Joe. Those suffering from leukemia. Dale, Terry, Kellen, and Kendall. For those battling breast cancer. Crystal, Michelle, Darlene, Shirley, and Lenore. We ask you to also bless Becky and Matt as they suffer from liver cancer. Alan and Cindy as they battle pancreatic cancer. Be with Ryan with colon cancer. 
Gloria with bladder cancer, Sherry with bone cancer, and Bev with kidney cancer. We also pray for Paul, Deanna, Bradley, Bonnie, Brett, Shannon, Josh, Howard, Carol, Doyle, Eva, Kim, and Sylvia. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up before you today all those who are immobile and homebound. Grant them your love and your compassion. Be with especially those from our congregation. Be with Joyce and Carrie. Lord, in your mercy, we also lift up those not free today because of their illnesses. For those who are recovering from surgery, Betty, Becky, Susan, Margie, Johnny, Jesse, and Lisa. We also pray for Wayne with heart issues, Rhonda suffering from an aneurysm, Joyce, Mary, and Greg as he suffers with a lung disease and the effects of COVID. Bless those who are recovering from a stroke, Lee and Vernell. Give your care to Larry as he needs a kidney transplant. Bless also Chris with only partial lung use and sinus problems. Brent, awaiting surgery to remove a tumor on his pancreas. Bob, as he is in hospice care in Sugarland. Susie, with her health issues. Wayne, dealing with Parkinson's. Becky, as she improves. And Bob, we also pray for Ginny, as she has suffered from diabetes and thyroid problems. Ella, who needs strength. Bob, Ashley, with an operable tumor. And Kimbra, suffering from a liver disease. We ask you to also be with those suffering from MS. Paulette and Sarah, according to your gracious will, release them from their illness, pain, and suffering, using doctors, nurses, medicines, and miracles, if it be your will. Lord, in your mercy, we also pray for those who are not free, the marginalized, the poor, those addicted to drugs, the homeless, and those suffering from fear. Show compassion to them and help them in their hour of need. Lord, in your mercy, we are called by your word to remember our leaders. We remember those who lead our nation, our president, our Congress, those who lead at the state and even local levels. Give them wisdom to govern this great land that we might always be free. We also ask that you would give every leader in authority in our world a desire for peace and not for war. Lord, in your mercy, we lift these and the petitions of our hearts up to you, gracious Father knowing that you will both hear and answer us according to your will. We pray in the name of Jesus, who set us free to be your people, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated. 